Good afternoon, everybody. Toby Salgado here, Super Agents Live. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you're new to the show, welcome. Uh, I hope you like it. You know, what I do on the show is I interview uh, top producing real estate agents, coaches, and authors, and I dig into what made them successful and uh, where they failed. You know, so hopefully you guys don't have to make the same mistakes. Now, uh, real quick, hashtag for this show, unpack that idea. Uh, whenever I mention that, Twitter goes off. When I don't mention it, uh, you guys tend to fail about it. So um, there's lots of tweetable items in this episode. Now, this is sort of this is sort of a nuts and bolts episode. Um, now, if you're a new agent, I think you're going to get definitely get some 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 stuff out of this. Now, and and look, if you're a guy out there and you're already doing you know eighty million dollars, there's a couple nuggets in here for you. Um, uh, look, it's nuts and bolts. We get into how you build your list, how you build your database. That's so basic, guys. But you know what? A lot of people, I talk with a lot of people and uh, they send me emails and I, I say, well, how big is your database? And they're like, well, I, I haven't really been collecting them. I'm like, you've not been collecting emails? And, and, and I have been looking uh, lately, uh, you know, just with people calling me and I look at their sites and you know what? Uh, you know, I was talking to a guy today, today. And, uh, and I, I said, hey, you know, how about, you know, g- taking some of your budget and throwing it on Facebook ads? And he's like, well, look, uh, I tried it and it didn't work, right? Typical. I tried it and it didn't work. <clears throat> and, and I said, well, okay, well, maybe the copy was wrong. And he said, no, 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 I was getting click-throughs, but they weren't doing anything. And then I go on a site and I'm like, there's nothing for me to do. Like, you don't have a, a book download. You don't have a, a place where I can, you know, f- give you my, my name and email address for a home value. Uh, there's nothing there. So, man, anyhow, it kind of ties into the show. You know, there's some very, very basic things in terms of being a marketer that that either you know and don't do or you don't know. Um, so, again, we're going to talk about how you build your list. Uh, we're going to talk about when, you know, once you build your database, how often should you contact them? You know, and then, well, a lot of people struggle with, well, look, I know I should c- call them every quarter, you know, or, or every month or whatever it is. But then they go, hey, Toby, I don't know what to say to them. So we, we get into some of that stuff. We get into scripts. We get into some door knocking scripts. So I hope you like this. Now, this guy is a trainer. Um, and, uh, and look, you know, I, I, the only trainer that I'll endorse, I mean, I look, I like, I like it. I like Mike Ferry. I like Tom Ferry. I like him personally. I like what they, they stand for. But the guy that I trust is Bob Corcoran. And, 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 uh, you know, he likes what I'm doing. I like what he's doing. And, uh, if you are, have been thinking about getting a coach, um, we've cut a deal with Bob where, you know, you just call him, you just email him and, uh, tell him that you found him through the show and he'll give you, you know, he'll give you a free consultation, which is really cool, man. Um, uh, and you can, you know, who you can email, just email Bubba, B-U-B-B-A at CorcoranCoaching.com and, and get that call. Now, um, uh, before we get to the episode, I just want to say, as you guys know, I hope you know, uh, I'm building this radio advertising agency. Um, and we can only add, uh, and well, look, here's what we're looking for. We're looking for the top, top, top people in each market. We're only going to focus on 100 markets, number one. <clears throat> There's a lot more than 100 radio markets, but we're only going after your, the top 100 radio markets because you know what we want to do? I want to put 100 top, top, top producing agents under one roof and, and, and literally, you know, if we can be responsible as a group for $10 billion of real estate sales, we can move the needle, man. We can, there's so many interesting things we can do, book deals, TV shows, all that stuff. So if you are that person or on that trajectory, give me a call um, and, uh, you know, send me an email and let's see if we're right for radio. All right. Hey, let's get to it. Hope you like it. <laughs> Welcome to Super Agents Live. This is the one place where you can come and hear the most successful people in real estate. You'll hear how these super agents built their businesses, how they stay productive, and how they stay motivated. Who am I? My name's Toby Salgado, and I made my first million in real estate. Yeah. And I'm your host for the next 30 minutes while we talk to yet another amazing real estate yeah. entrepreneur. Stay tuned. Let's go. Yeah. Hey, Steve, thanks for taking the time out today. Now, I've given the audience a brief overview of your background, but take a minute, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, and what you got going on today. I know it's pretty interesting. Okay, well, I'm a retired um, Marine Corps officer. I've been out for 17 years now. I've been in the real estate business for 14 years, Uh, got licensed in 1999, 
and uh, actually been in the Mike Ferry sales system now for uh, 11 years. And I'm in Shreveport, Louisiana with Century 21. So, okay, so... Um so you got uh, interesting. Okay. So let me, let's back up. So you, real estate for 14 years, you've been uh, in around Mike Ferry for 11. So you, you sold real estate for three and then kind of migrated to Mike before we, we get to that. I want to talk to you, you know, so 99 uh, was really the start of like, like your timing was, was in a lot of ways really good, right? Cause 99, 2000 uh, were good years. Um, and then 01, right, right after 9-11, things got a little bit wonky, but then the housing market started to go crazy after that. So uh, talk to us about the, the – the, and, and then obviously you lived through 2008. So talk to us about just market timing and, and, and what's that, what that means for people who, who are selling real estate, especially if they're entering the, this, the market today. Well, unfortunately for me, that started in real estate. I went to work for a broker that gave me no training and no support. Um, here was my welcome aboard to the brokerage. Hey, here's your desk. Here's your phone. Good luck. I had no sales training, no sales background, no sales experience. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to say. So I spent my first three years in real estate during a great market doing seven, eight, maybe nine transactions per year, starving to death. Without my military re uh, retirement pension, I would have been out of the business big time. So I've missed that market, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, in uh, November of 2003, I went to Dallas, Texas, to a Mike Ferry action workshop. Mike Ferry actually reprogrammed me during those four days. He flushed everything out of my head that I thought I knew about real estate, made me realize that I didn't know anything about real estate sales, and got me reprogrammed, and I've been with that program ever since. Uh, I actually doubled my production between the first week of November and the end of December in 2003. I went from eight transactions to 17 transactions. And then the following year, 2004, I did 197 transactions. Holy so God. learning what to do and what to say had everything to do with turning my career in real estate around. Interesting, man. So I, I want to dig into that a little bit because, you know, look, here, here's the thing. Um, and first of all, I, I want to I want the audience to key in on, you know, you were in the Marines for 17 years and w there are things that you got right in, in terms of programming, things that were very much driven into you. Right. So certainly discipline. Right. The, and that's that's one of the problems I think people have. And I, I want to talk to you about your, your take on that. But so what you said, you went from eight to 17. Okay. Now you're doing okay. You're starving at eight, right? Then you go to 17, you're doing okay. And then all of a sudden you go to two, just under 200. That is what you said a minute ago was, well, I, I, I learned what to say and what to do that, that there's a whole lot more in between <laughs> going from 17 to almost 200. Uh, you know, what was that reprogramming? Well, I mean, I, I don't, I can't really honestly put my mind around that going from 17 to almost 200. Well, first of all, uh, just a correction, I had 28 years in the Marine Corps. Oh, my uh, gosh. Okay. And then I'd been, uh, I'd been retired for 17 years as of right now. I retired in 1997. Got it. Okay. And 14 of those years, I've been in real estate, and 11 of those, I've been uh, actually in the business. The first three years, I was just you know, licensed. I didn't really consider myself being in the business because I wasn't doing any business. Got it. Uh, anyway. Um, I just think that the problem that most agents have, and actually the National Association of Realtors says that right now a brand new agent coming into the market has about a 50% chance of actually staying with it for more than a year. The typical brokerage does not offer the proper training and the proper support for new agents to teach them that, hey, yes, you have a license, but that doesn't mean that you know anything about sales. We've got to get people into a structured sales environment in order for them to learn sales skills. There's no such thing as someone who was born to be a salesperson. Salespersons are trained, not born. And if you don't get that training, you're not going to make it in sales. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't do 8, 10, 12, 15 transactions a year and make some money in real estate, but I'm talking about 
to sell real estate at a high volume and be very successful in real estate and actually build wealth and, and make a career of it that's worth anything, you've got to get some sales training and you've got to stay in sales training in order to keep raising your level of skill and to keep honing and refining those skills. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, that makes sense. I mean, I think there's another component to it. You know, you can, you can, um, there are people, uh, you know, I, I would agree with you that, that salespeople are not necessarily born. I mean, I think, but you know, uh, okay. I don't want to go down that path too, too much, but yeah, I would agree with that overall. Here's the other thing that you have to learn to be successful. You can be successful in selling. That doesn't mean you will have a successful business, right? Be- because you can do two. 200 transactions, you know, and, and at the end of the year have nothing, right? Um, Absolutely. You also do that training has to also include uh, business systems. It has to, uh, you have to learn how to manage money and how to keep your overhead low. I mean, there's a lot of training that you've required in order to run a business. Like any other business, the real estate, an independent uh, real estate business is no different. If you're not profitable, it doesn't matter how much money you're turning over. Right. You're not profitable if you don't know how to manage that money and keep your expenses down and operate within a budget. Then yeah, you've got huge problems. So I agree. Yeah, yeah. So let's talk about the sales piece, and then we'll talk about you know actually ha- you know creating and building a business. So um, I, I, I'm intrigued. Uh, so you you went to some this Mike Ferry boot camp, and look, you know, from there are lots of coaches out right. There's Mike. There's Tom. There's there's Bob Corcoran. There's Tim Harris. You have all these guys. There's Buffini, right? Everybody sort of has a different style. Now, what 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 Mike teaches, as far as I know, and I and I you know I've, I've talked with Mike on the show. I've talked with him offline. I've seen him in person. You know, he's like very old school. You know, call him. You know, knock on their door, follow up, and and that's you know that there's no magic there. So I want to know, Mike. You said reprogrammed you, and that, and that made all the difference. What what does that look like? I've never heard anybody say that. Well, the only thing that I, the only model that I had to go by in my first three years was what other agents around me were doing. What were they doing? They were sitting at open houses. They were sitting by the telephone in the office on floor duty, hoping that the phone would ring with a buyer or someone who needed to sell. Or they were doing a uh, geographic farm, which takes money if you're going to do the mailings, et cetera, et cetera, which I didn't have at the time. And those sorts of traditional methods. And Mike, as well as me, as well as anyone else who's knowledgeable in real estate, will tell you, yes, you can generate business with those methods. However, you'll never generate business at a high level with those methods because those are methods where you're sitting, doing very little or doing nothing, waiting and hoping for business to come to you. The best way to build a business quickly and to build a solid base for a business that you can continue to expand is to go out and earn it every day. Just like you said, Mike teaches the old school way, and I don't have anything negative or derogatory to say about any of the other coaching systems. I don't know anything about them, to be honest with you. Hmm. I've only been in the Mike Ferry system. But I know that if I contact, actively, proactively go out and contact 25 to 30 people a day, and speak to them about real estate in a question-based format, well-scripted format, then I know that I'm going to find the next deal. You see, people don't buy or sell real estate every day. They buy or sell real estate on intervals of years, 3, 5, 18, whatever. So it should not be a surprise to us that not everybody wants or needs real estate services. We have to talk to 25 or 30 people a day to find the one who does. And that's what I do on a daily basis. Right. Um, I, I would agree with that, you know, and, 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 uh, and by the way, I have nothing negative to say about Tom or, or I'm sorry, Mike and anybody's system. Uh, there's different. I, and I will say, pro- I would probably venture to say Mike has made more millionaires than, than, than anybody, even even maybe like a Tony Robbins, right? Um, I, would you agree with that? Uh, I don't have any uh, statistical basis to make that statement, but I know that Mike is the oldest, the original, and the largest and the most successful coaching company, and there's probably six or 700 of his coaching clients right now 
that are doing somewhere between 750000 a year and $3 million a year in commissions. Wow. So he's extreme. his system is extremely successful if you follow the system. Let's put it that way. Yeah, I would agree. So, so, so you mentioned two things, right? You said, okay, go, you, you need to contact 25 to 30 people. So we're going to dig into mm-hmm. that for a second. You need to know, when you contact them, right, you need to know what to say. And then you mm-hmm. need to be cognizant of the fact that uh, real estate is bought and sold on, on in intervals. So so now and so you're going to get rejected a lot, right? And it's not rejected. People just don't need your product. They don't need your service because it's not. They're not at that time. Now yeah. those are two different things, right? Because the last one uh, is a, a mindset issue. People feel rejected even though they shouldn't. And the first one is they may know intellectually. Okay, I got to talk to 25 or 30 people, but where do I do that, right? So help us. Like, what kind of and where can people put themselves up to meet and talk with those organically, right, to meet and talk with 25 or 30 people today. Yeah, let me give you the three major categories that I attack ravenously each day. I start out with the brand new expireds. If I have a brand new expired, I assume that that expired is highly motivated. I assume that they need to get their home back on the market immediately, and I'm typically knocking on their door somewhere between 745 and 8 in the morning, and their listing expired around midnight the night before. Wow. I know that the slugs that come dragging into the office around 9.30, or a few of them are going to call some expireds, but if I'm there before 8, I've got first crack at them, and if I'm there in person, I have a huge advantage over anyone calling by phone. Are you aware of the, I'm sure you are, are you aware of the three uh, elements of total presence? Uh, No, let's, let's walk through them. Okay. Well... The first element of your total presence is the words you use. The words you use equal 7% of your total presence. The second element of your total presence is tonality, or how you deliver those words, the highs, the lows, the inflections, the emphasis that we put on certain words. 38% of your total presence. If you'll notice, the difference between 38 and 7 is over five times more effective and five times more powerful. In other words, how we deliver our words, how we structure and deliver our sentences is more than five times more important and effective than the actual words themselves. And then last but not least, the remaining 55% of your total presence is body language. The eye contact, the smiling, the nodding affirmatively, the neutral body posture that is non-threatening, the firm handshake, so forth and so on. When I'm there in person, I have a 55% advantage over anyone calling over the phone. Yeah, no, no, I, I actually didn't know that. I, I didn't, I didn't understand it. So total presence, yeah. So that's that's uh, that's really, really interesting. I've never really thought about it in that way, right? In terms of you know the the, the five times, seven times more important than uh, your your words. So so I mean, look, but so people, if you don't know what to say, that's going to affect you. But, in a long way, right? Your body language, right? You're going to feel uncomfortable. That's going to come off, and you're not going to you're not going to look professional. So, so what? Absolutely. So I'm I'm you know people are going to feel sheepish, right? I'm I'm going to I'm going to go to somebody's door at seven forty five, and and everybody you know that says that's listening to you right now, Steve. They're going to listen to you and go, man, I, I know that's a good idea, but I'm going to I you know I I'm going to be bothering them. They don't want to see me. Like, um, you, they have to fight that. So let's 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 walk through this. What? 745, you go, you come to my door, I'm an expired. Mm-hmm. And, like, I guess we have to walk through the words. What, what is a good script that somebody can use? Yeah, let's just role play it. Yeah. Um, knock, knock, or ring the bell, whichever. And you come to the door and you say, uh, Hello? Hi, good morning. I'm Steve with Century 21. I'm here because we have an emergency. May I share it with you? Yeah. Your home is no longer on the market. Your listing expired last night at midnight. And while I'm saying that, I'm holding up the MLS printout to validate that so that there's no question about what I'm saying. Mm. Okay. I assumed that the sale of your home was extremely important, so I came right out to get you back on the market immediately so that we don't miss any sales opportunities today. Do you have just a moment for me to get you back on the market? Yeah, I guess. What? But doesn't my, doesn't my agent, um, isn't he going to just, uh, I, I don't know why he let it expire. Isn't my agent just going to do that? He's going to he just re-up it? 
You know, that's another reason why I came right out this morning. See, right now you have no agent. When your listing expired, so did your agency agreement, which means right now you're totally unrepresented. There's not a single agent in town working with a buyer who knows that your home is for sale, and there's not a single buyer in this market right now that knows that your home is available. Can you see that we need to get your home relisted immediately so that you don't miss any sales opportunities today? Isn't that what you really need? Yeah, I mean, I want to sell my house. Um, uh, so Fantastic. I'm available now at 4.30 this afternoon, which is most convenient for you. What uh, I forget, it was, it was 90 days ago when I did this. What, what, what do I have to do to get that? I mean, I want to get rid of my house. What do I do? What, how do we go about this? All you have to do is sign this contract. I'm ready to go right now. I need to get my sign in your yard, get, my, get your key and my lockbox, and get this in the MLS computer before you get to work this morning. So again, are you ready to sign the contract right now? Wow. Get back on the um, Yeah, sure. Let's, let, yeah. Fantastic. I'll have the uh, photographer out later today to get the photos, and you'll be, on, uh, you'll be in the MLS within the next uh, two hours, and you'll be on all of the seven or 800 websites in the next 48 hours. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Um, how many of your students actually do this? All of them. I have all of my coaching clients going out and knocking doors. I'm teaching them how to be effective and how to be powerful. I'm also teaching them to stand and use their gestures and their body language when they're actually prospecting by phone because even though you can't see body language over the phone, obviously, the body language enhances your tonality, and the more enhanced your tonality is, the more effective it is. Now, it's funny, like, like um, so your tonality, to talk about this, I mean, your, your, yours was, it was fairly flat, right? There was no, not that many ups and downs. It was, it was grave, man. It was serious. And, uh, and I, I don't know if that's you or, or you meant it to be that way because you started out with, we have an emergency, you know? Like, exactly. I wanted to be grave and serious because I want to get their attention. I was that way intentionally. Interesting. Okay. I love that, man. I love that. It's the first time I heard. So, so, so that's category number one. One, right, you said there were three. What? What is? Is there anything else you want to add to that? I mean, I think that's a fa- fa- well, Let me ask you this: so all of your people do this. Um, mm-hmm. uh, give me a, a percentage, a ratio, right? Um, how many? How many times do I have to do this before? Um, how effective is it? Well, anytime you're scripted, you're far more effective and you're far more uh, efficient than someone who is unscripted, who's just winging it from person to person or from transaction to transaction, however you want to look at it. Once you become scripted and you see that these scripts work, then that starts building confidence. Confidence is based in two things. A is knowledge. B is an experience. So when people sense that you're confident, they know immediately or they sense immediately that you are both uh, knowledgeable and experienced. If, on the other hand, as you come across without confidence, which it's pretty tough to fake confidence. If you're not confident, pretty soon they'll yeah. figure it out. Yep. They will assume that you're either not knowledgeable or inexperienced or both, and they will therefore assume that you are incompetent. Mm. So if you don't come across confidently, they will assume that you're incompetent and they won't do business with you. Yeah, I know. Oh, yeah, for sure. If, if I sense incompetence or, you know, the other thing and the other thing, too, that that uh, especially with new agents. Right. And this this talks about uh, the, about uh, your confidence is that, you know, new, you know, I hear it all the time. I get emails. I get 200, 300 emails a day and people ask me questions. And they go, Toby, hey, man, like I'm running out of money. I have 45 days left and I need to get a listing now. Right. Or I need to do a deal now. What do I do? And I'm like, you know what, man, first of all that your that desperation like people can smell that a mile away and and that that speaks to incompetence as well um so again so so expireds are the first category what what was the second expireds are the first category okay. my second category is past clients current clients and sphere of influence meaning people that I do business with such as the person that cuts my hair my dry cleaner my car dealer on and on and on uh right now I've been in the business for, um, I've been managing a database for a little over 11 years, and I have a database of about 2,700 people. So I'm calling 10 of them each day, 
mm-hmm. and I'm asking them for referrals. I can do a sample call for you. Hi, this is Steve Futch, your real estate professional for life. I was calling to see if you had one moment for me for a business call. Well, sure, Steve. What's up? Well, as you know, my business depends upon referrals from friends and past clients such as yourself. I was wondering, who do you know that needs to buy or sell property in the immediate future? And typically what you'll get there is the reflex no. Yeah. Same as walked into Dillard's department store and the clerk said, may I help you? You'd say no before you even thought about it, right? Yep. No, I'm just looking. Same thing here. You're going to get the reflex no. So you need to follow up with a follow-up question, which is, I appreciate you taking a moment to think about that, but are you sure there's no one at the club, at the golf course, at the gym, at school, at church, at work, whatever, whatever they're involved in, that said anything about buying or selling real estate? Well, you know, Sally and Jim down the street did say something about their daughter graduating from college and they were going to buy her a townhome. Maybe you should check with them. Fantastic. And what's that address? And may I use you as a reference for, for, for contacting them? If you call 10 people a day, you will get some referrals. Everybody knows somebody two or three times a year that are going to sell or buy real estate. But they're not going to call you. You've got to call them and ask. If you'll call 10 people a day, if you go through 2,700 people a year, you'll get about 270 referrals. You'll get about a 10% return on your uh, database each year if you'll call them, but most people don't bother to call them. Yeah, well, you're right. They don't. And and the other thing, like, so so I can see how that will work. And, and really what you – so you have 2,700 people in your database, and what you're doing with that call, you are prospecting, right? Just like that old miner, right, digging through, looking for – you're prospecting. And, and, you know, and that's sales. And I think even though – uh, every we're all in sales we sell real estate but people feel uncomfortable with that right they're like i don't want to sell that's not me how I'm, I'm sure you've heard this a million times how do you get somebody over that if they say look i just don't feel comfortable doing that right selling like that i would say that all knowledge and all skill and all new advances in your life come from getting uncomfortable. If you stay in your comfort zone, stay in your box, so to speak, for the rest of your life, you'll never learn, you'll never grow, you'll never take your business to the next level. Part of the system is to constantly expose yourself to something new, different, and uncomfortable in order to become comfortable with it. For example, I spent 28 years in the Marine Corps. I've been through enlisted boot camp, I've been through ranger school, I've been through paratrooper training, I've been through the special warfare training with the uh, Navy at the, uh, what you would call SEAL training, we call it BUDS, basic underwater diver school. Been through a tour in Vietnam, I've been bayoneted, I've been shot, I've taken shrapnel, I've been in hand-to-hand combat to the death three times. Oh my God. (laughs) And then I did... I've got commission that went to officer candidate school, which is extremely difficult in the Marine Corps. Graduated from that, went to Desert Shield, Desert Storm, another combat tour. So let's say that I'm experienced with being in uncomfortable situations. Now, the first time I went and knocked on a door, I was absolutely petrified because that's something I'd never done before. It was out of my comfort zone, even though you would think a guy with my training and experience wouldn't be afraid of anything. So anytime you do anything new or different, yes, there's going to be a fear factor. There's going to be a factor of being uncomfortable. But that's something that you have to get over and get beyond in order to grow and learn in anything. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I 100% agree with that. And I, and I think, again, you have an advantage because, like, it, it, and, and I've been in situations where I'm, I'm scared to death. And, and for me, I look back and go, look, what's the worst they can do, right? What, are, they, are they all going to beat me up, right? If you go to the door and knock, am I going to get beat up or shot? I'm probably not, right, for the most part. You, you know, you have the advantage of looking back and going, look, is, is what I'm doing right now, even if I'm uncomfortable, is this any worse than being bayoneted, shot, or, or hand-to-hand combat to death? And like, so you can dig in deep and go, no, it's not. I'm going to do this. 
But, you know, how, again, people who don't have that background and they, they, they intellectually know, yes, Steve, I need to get uncomfortable. I need to get out of my comfort zone. What, you know, look, you coach people on how to do, how, like, again, how do people do that? Well, it's all about mindset. Okay. You have to form the mindset. First of all, you have to have a winning expectation. Mm. You have to see yourself as a winner. Uh, write this down, everyone that's listening. Play the game as if you've already won. Yes. Play the game as if you've already won. Uh, best example I could give you of that is the Seattle Seahawks in the Super Bowl back in February. As a student of mindset, it was obvious to me when they came on the field after the first couple of minutes that they had already won the game. They knew that they had already won the game. There was no doubt in their mind about it. They were playing like winners, executing like winners, and winning big time right off the get-go. The only thing they were doing was going through the formality of playing the game out to validate to the rest of the world what they already knew. They took the greatest offensive team in the history of the National Football League. I forgot how many different offensive records the Denver Broncos set last year, but there were several. And they humiliated them. The only difference, the only substantial difference in those two teams on that day was mindset. There was no substantial difference in athletic talent. Right. right. So you've got... You've got to give people training and mindset how to think differently in order to act differently. You see, we have three things that, are, that uh, come from our mindset. Our attitude, our approach, and our expectations. Those are the manifestations of our attitude. That's how we manifest ourselves to the world. Uh, our mindset will determine how we manifest ourselves to the world. So we've got to change the way we think in order to give a different manifestation in order to get a different result. Right. I, I agree. One, and, and look, all these things, you know, um, um, you know, playing like you've won already, uh, you know, changing your mindset, um, getting outside of your comfort zone, all these things takes training. It takes practice. It's just like making decisions or lifting weights. The more you do it, the easier it gets. Um, Absolutely. Uh, repetition is the mother of skill. The more you do something, the better you get at it. There you go. So, so, so category number two is calling. Now, you started with, you said past clients, uh, you know, uh, past clients, current clients, sphere of first, influence. First category would be new expired. Second category would be past clients, current clients, sphere of influence, 10 calls. And then I go directly to for sale by owners because the for sale by owners, again, are people who have signs in their yard saying, hey, we need to sell our home. Typically, eight or nine out of ten of them will list with a broker within 90 days. However, most agents who don't know what to say and don't know what to do will never even contact a for sale by owner because they're scared to death someone might answer the phone and then they wouldn't know what to say or they won't knock on the door because they'd be afraid to. So there's very little competition for for sale by owners. And, so and I've found a real niche there. I've listed about... 26, 2700 for sale by owners in the past 11 years. I focus on them because I have little competition there, and I know that the vast majority of them are going to list with a broker within 90 days. So, so what? You know, I mean, this is a good thing. So you're you're a very scripted guy. What what would you first of all do? Do we call or do we show up? And and then secondarily, either. Either okay, and what what's what's a good script for that? I mean, I love this uh, on the expires. We have an emergency. What what? How would you frame the the? How would you approach a, a physical? Hi, I'm Steve with Century Twenty One. I'm I'm looking for the owner. Are you the owner? Well, yeah, I'm the owner. Great. Um, I'm doing a survey of all the for sale by owners in the area, and I was wondering if you sold this home, where would you go next? Well, I'm moving to Dallas, Texas. Dallas, that's exciting. And how soon do you have to be there? Well, you know, I'd like to be there. By Christmas. Okay, so you need to be there in the next three or four months. I can appreciate that. Did you understand that the average day zone market for a home like yours right now in Shreveport, Louisiana, is about 126 days, and then there's another 30 to 40 days to get the transaction closed? Well, no, I didn't know it took that long. Well, based on that new information, can you see that we need to get you listed immediately? in order to get you to Dallas in the next 90 to 120 days. Isn't that what you really need? That's exactly what I need. And that's exactly why you and I need to meet immediately. I'm available now or at 4.30 this afternoon, which is best for you. Right. So, so uh, okay, so uh, okay, you get in the door, you convince them, right? Um, 
you ask these leading questions, right? Uh, uh, the, and I, every time, both both scripts, right? You've given the either or sort of close, right? We can do it now or at se- six o'clock. Um, but the real problem is with Fizbos is they're cheap. They want too much money for their house. How do you handle that when they go? Okay, st- okay, Steve. Yes, I know. I, I need to list it. I know. I know the timing. You know, one hundred twenty six days. You know, I know I need to do it right now. Um, mm-hmm. But I want. I want four hundred thousand dollars for my house. You know, okay. let's say your home is worth uh, current market value is three fifty, and you want four hundred, right? Yep. I'm going to say, well, I can appreciate that you'd like to get four hundred thousand for your home. I'd like to get that for you too. However, do you control the market? Well, no, I don't control the market. Well, neither do I, and neither does any other individual. The market is controlled by the buyers, and no one can cause a buyer to pay more than market value for anything. Let me ask you another question. Would you pay what you're asking for your own home if you were shopping for a home today, knowing that you could buy three or four or five other similar homes for $50,000 less? Well, no, probably not. Exactly. So why would anyone else? You see, we've got to price it at market value to get the market to respond to it. If you're going to overprice it, hell, let's just price it at $3 million. We might as well make a big splash because it's going to have the same opportunity of selling if it's 50000 over or $3 million over. If you really want to sell it, let's price it to sell. If you're not serious about selling it or your level of motivation to get it sold is not that high, then there's no need putting it on the market. You see, I won't take an overpriced listing because it's a complete waste of time. I'll let somebody else have it for six months, and then I'll come in and get them as an expired, at which time they'll probably be ready to listen to pricing and, and price it right. They have to be made to understand that pricing is the most important factor in the sales process. If it's priced right, there's nothing you can do to keep it from selling. If it's overpriced, you can put it on the front page of the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal every day for six months, and you won't get a single showing. No one can cause a buyer to pay more than market value for anything. Yeah, it's that it, it is that simple. I mean, you know, the, the way you just walked me through it right now is it, it was it was very rational and it made complete sense to me. I mean, I, th- you know, I think I would be swayed by that, but but again, I that doesn't work on everybody. So. So um, no, it doesn't. That's why I continue to visit my for sale by owners weekly. I have a system. I systematically visit them. I found that my average is six weeks to get a listing. Typically, it takes six weekly visits to get them to list because it's a process of educating them and giving them information and planning some negatives. Hmm. And 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 what, what what's an example of that? Uh, what planning a negative? Yeah. I'll just say, um, Mr. And Mrs. Let's say I'm on my second visit. Hi, it's Steve from Century 21 again. I'm just following up from our visit last week. Did you have anyone look at the house this week? Well, yeah, we had a few people walk through. Great. Were they qualified for a mortgage? Mm. Well, I mean, we don't know. I mean, we think they were. We hope they were. Thank you for making that point. You see, most people shopping for sale by owners are shopping for sale by owners for a specific reason. Typically, that reason is they're not qualified for a mortgage. That's the reason they're not working with an agent. No agent will work with them to show them listed properties because they're not qualified for a mortgage. So now they're forced to shop for sale by owners and seek owner financing. So my question is, are you folks going to be okay with having unqualified lookers walking through your home and asking for owner financing? Or would you rather have qualified buyers seeking to purchase in the immediate future at full market value. Well, we want the qualified buyers at full market value. That's exactly why people like you hire me. You still need to be in Dallas in 90 days, don't you? Well, I have to be. Fantastic. I'm available now or 4.30 this <laughs> afternoon, which is best for you. Yeah, I love it. Okay, I love that. Okay, so I, I really... Now, but go ahead. Let's look at it a little bit deeper. Okay. Let's say I leave. They didn't give me the appointment. What have I done? I've now planted in their mind that most of the people calling or coming to their door are not qualified for a mortgage. I'm turning the tables and educating them at the same time. Now, instead of looking at me, the real estate professional, as the enemy, as the bad guy, they're looking at me as the oracle of all good information 
and they're starting to look suspiciously at the members of the public that come to their door because they have no idea of knowing if those people are qualified for mortgage. They have no way of verifying. Right. Right. No, I, I, yeah, I, 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 that's, that's great. I mean, this, this, I think a lot of people in my audience are gonna, is going to find this episode really, really helpful because, you know, even though this is basic stuff, a, a lot of people, you know, they, they, this is what they need. Um, so let me ask you this. So we know, we know two things. One, I need to uh, contact 25 to 30 people every day. Now we can, we can, we, you have a database. Not everybody has a database. How do okay. we, how do we, how do we build Because we know that the database is super important. How do we build the database and put ourselves in a situation to, to meet 25 to 30 people every day, number one, and two, you know, put two or three of those in our database every day. That's a great question. I would pick a street or a subdivision or a neighborhood where there is a, uh, moderate to high amount of real estate business where I'd like to break into and I would go door to door. I would knock on the door. Hi, I'm Steve from Century 21. I stopped by to let you know about 123 Mockingbird, which just listed for $400,000. It um, features three bedrooms, two baths, 2,000 square feet, two car garage. I'd also like to let you know about 178 Mockingbird, which just sold for 413000 It featured three bedrooms, two baths, 1,900 square feet with a three-car garage. And I was wondering, who do you know that needs to buy or sell in the immediate future? Well, we don't know anybody. Well, I appreciate you thinking about that for a moment. You sure there's no one at home, at school, at church, at the club, at the gym that said anything about buying or selling real estate? Nope, don't know anybody. By the way, when do you plan on moving? Oh, we don't plan on moving anytime soon. Great. Well, I appreciate you taking a moment to speak with me. Would you be interested as a homeowner in getting a free e-newsletter once a month that will show you exactly what's going on in our real estate market? Well, the word free is what they key in on. Mm. Well, yeah, free. I'll, t- I'll take that. Great. All I already have your address. I just need your name, your cell phone number, and your email address, and I'll have that over to you every month. Now... I have them in my database, and I'm going to be calling them for referrals several times a year, and I'm going to be sending them my market statistics every month when I update them so that once a month, even if they delete it, for that one nanosecond, it reminds them who their real estate professional is. And even if they delete it for every month for three years in a row, the moment they need to buy or sell, they're going to remember, okay, Steve is my real estate professional. Steve is a market expert. He's been keeping me updated on what's going on in the market month after month after month. I'm calling Steve. Right. Okay. Let me, um, so th- that's good stuff. Let me go back for a second. How, I, and I forgot. How did you, you knock, knock, let's, let's start at the beginning. So you knock on the door and how do you, how do you start? It's just, it's a just listed, just sold approach. Okay. I'm in everyone on the street of homes in the area, the immediate area that have just listed and just sold. I use one just listed and one just sold. Gotcha. So you, so I open the door and you immediately just go and hi, you, you like, you take no break. You don't go, hi, how you doing? I'm Steve. You just go, hi, I'm Steve. And I, I'm in the neighborhood showing or, or telling everyone X. And just, yeah. you just keep on rolling. I'm here, I'm here to let you know about the home up the street that just sold. I'm here to let you know about the home up the street that just listed. Do you know of anyone who might need to move to this neighborhood or anyone else who's thinking of selling? Got it. Hey, and hey, then if they don't know anybody there, you ask them, by the way, when do you plan on moving? Got it. Okay, cool. I know when they're planning. They're both, sometimes they'll say, well, we're not moving for another three months. Oh, fantastic. So you're moving in 90 days. Now you have a listing lead, right? So that's door knocking. Now, what? Now, what other ways? Again, again, this comes back to a lot of people. They, they know door knocking works. I had a guy on the show. His name's Thatch Nguyen. I don't know if you know this guy, but his deal was a hundred doors a day for ten years, and he did this. He knocked on a hundred doors every day. By year three, he was making a million bucks a year, and uh, and he had owned like seventeen houses. People know it works, but but what stops them, Steve? It's just like you know what? Look, there's, I'll ask you two questions, and I'll I'll, I'll, I'll give you some room to run. What stops people, number one, from doing this they know works? And number two, what stops people from getting help, from getting coaching, even though they know every single top producer, every single athlete has multiple coaches? Why? What is the – I mean, this – go. 
Well, I think the first thing is work ethic. Unfortunately, we're in an industry that people who don't have a work ethic, people who don't want to have to get up and go to work or be accountable to any employer or anyone, for that matter, uh, tend to gravitate toward real estate. When's the last time you heard of an agent being fired by a broker because they didn't show up for work on time or if they even say they didn't show up for a week or even say didn't get a listing for a month. Yeah. I mean, it does not happen. Yeah. Brokers bend over backwards to coddle and make excuses for their agents in order to keep them happy so they won't leave and go to another broker when in fact that's the best thing that could happen to the broker because if they're non-productive it's like a ball and chain why would you want an agent who's not productive right just for the sake of having another agent the reason most people get into real estate is because they don't want to work and if you don't have a work ethic it's no different in real estate than it is in any other arena of human endeavor it's the people with the best work ethic that will always rise to the top yeah real estate sales is hard work you got to get up and put in 8 10 12 sometimes 14 or 16 hour days to be a top producer talk to any top producer and they will let you know that they're not sitting around they're they're working actively yeah, and I'll, I'll I'll just throw in a couple things. Number one, you know, people get into real estate for two reasons, right? They want time freedom and they want financial freedom. The problem is they they abuse the time freedom and they will never get financial freedom. And the and the other thing I want to say, and I'm sure you'll agree with this, is real estate is the the most fantastic vehicle for success for wealth that in 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 the history of mankind, right? I mean, it, real estate is at the and and it's anybody can do it. Anybody can. I mean, it just again, just what you said. It just takes hard work. You're exactly right. It's wide open to everyone. We all have the same opportunity. There's absolutely no ceiling on what you can earn if you're willing to learn some skills and work. And it has made more uh, people millionaires than any other industry by a long shot. I mean, there's nothing else that even comes close. Right. So real estate is an uh, unbelievable opportunity if you're willing to learn some skills and do a little work. I, uh, one, so so let me, um, one of the things you said, so in terms of adding to people to your database, right, go and do the work and knock, pick, a, pick, a, pick a farm and knock it. Now, um, uh, once you get in, once you get these people into your database, you're building your database, you, you said earlier, you said, I will call them several times a year and try to get referrals. People, again, people struggle with the, uh, with the frequency. How, how often should people start calling these people? Well, I would start calling them immediately. Uh, our system teaches that we need to call our uh, past clients, current clients, and sphere of influence four times a year. That's once a quarter. Okay. So you have to figure out how many people you're going to call first, how many people that's determined by how many people in your database, and then you break it down systematically. How many must I call per day in order to call everyone four times a year? Or how many people must I call per week in order to call everyone four times a year? So forth and so on. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's good. So, so, so again, let me ask. Everything the, is structured. Everything is systemized. If you look, if you look at a typical brokerage, right? You see three categories. You see the top twenty percent, right? These are the rainmakers. You see the middle sixty percent, who are people holding their own, right? In terms of you know, selling real estate, the bottom twenty percent are just taking up air, right? Taking up space. Now, the difference between the top twenty and the bottom twenty is eighty-five percent of the top twenty will have a coach. 100% of the bottom 20 will not. Why, why is that, Steve? Why, I mean, if people see that it works. Why don't people invest in themselves and get some help when they need it? It comes down to two things. Number one, they don't see it as an investment. They see it as an expense, and mm. they say they don't have the money. My re reply to that is always, what is your average commission? Let's say someone says $5,000. Okay, for one year of coaching, that would cost you two and a half commission checks. If you could get 20 to 25 commission checks in exchange for two and a half commission checks, would that be a good deal for you? Yeah. Well, yeah, it'd be an awesome deal. Then what's keeping you from signing up? Second is a lack of commitment to themselves and a commitment to their business. Hmm. People, a lot of people in real estate, for whatever reason, don't have that commitment to themselves and to their business. Therefore, they see no value and, and jumping in in order to f get involved in something that will give them a competitive edge. So it's, it's 
the two major factors are money and lack of commitment to themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, a, a perfect example would be if I go and give a presentation, typically uh, 10% of the audience will sign up for coaching. Um, if there's 50 people there, I can expect to get about five contracts. If there's 100 people there, I get about 10 contracts, so forth and so on. About 10% of the, any real estate audience will respond to the absolute need for coaching, and the rest of them, for various reasons, will absolutely just pass it by. They see that it works. They see the evidence of it. They believe that it works, but they won't commit to it. Now, what, what about, what about, you know, so, you, so, so again, there's no magic here, right? You have to do the work and, no. and, and early on, early on people need the, this, you know, people need to understand kind of really a lot of stuff that you broke out here, right? You know, what are the categories, what to say now, what happens when people go, okay, look, I, I you know, I, I've been with you, Steve, for two months. I know what to do, right? I know what to say. I got, I got all the scripts. I have them. Um, I don't, I don't need coaching anymore. What, what would you say to that person? I would say that everyone that I know of that's gotten out of coaching over the past 11 years, without exception, everyone to a person, their productivity has gone down. You don't maintain the same mindset and you don't maintain the same attitude, approach, and expectations if you get out of the coaching because the coaching supplies something that the real estate industry is absolutely devoid of, which is accountability. If you have that coaching accountability and you have someone keeping you, let's say, between the ditches every week, you start veering off the road through that six or seven days, and then every week you have a 30-minute call with your coach that gets you back up on the road and going straight again. Accountability is absent from this industry. Like we just said, nobody's gotten fired recently for not showing up or for not taking a listing. And people in this industry understand that there is no accountability, but a small percentage of us realize that we need the accountability in order to be productive and successful. Those are the people that sign up for coaching, and those are the people that wind up excelling in the business because they know that they must have the element of accountability in order to grow, learn, and achieve. Right. Okay. So – when we started this, and we're going we're gonna to start wrapping up here in a few minutes, but when we started this, you said that 50% of the people don't make it one year in, in, in real estate. Now, you, well, I said that's what National Association of Realtors is telling us from their statistic. Brand new agents, new in the business, have about a 50% probability of staying in the business beyond one year. Right. Okay. So, so and here's my question to you. Um, f- for somebody starting out or, or recharging their business today, what is the, you know, is there one thing that, that when people start out, right, or recharging, the, you know, they've been out for a little bit and they're coming back in, you know, what is the th- common theme that you see that people, that most agents get wrong? I know that's a big question, but I, I just want to see where you take it. Well, the thing that they get wrong is they think it's about them. Unfortunately, we're in a very egocentric uh, industry. People believe, I mean, you take the average person off the street that's a nobody like me, and all of a sudden they get a real estate license, boom, they're supposed to become a celebrity. You see their picture plastered all over bus stop seats and uh, billboards, and you see their advertisements in every newspaper and magazine. Some of them are buying radio and TV time, which seems to have some good effect. But the point is, This industry has never been about you. It's not about you today, and it'll never be about you in the future. You have to do everything and make it about the client, the prospect. Once you learn to get rid of the word I and you get rid of the word tell, stop telling people. You see, selling is not telling. Selling is asking questions, and most of us are not trained to ask questions. We're trained to go blah, 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 blah all day, and that turns people off. The first thing that you have to do to be successful in real estate is learn to get rid of the word tell from your vocabulary, substitute the word share. Mm. If I walk up to you, Toby, and I say, Toby, let me tell you something. Even if you like me, and no matter how well I said it, deep down inside, that kind of rubs you the wrong way because no one likes to be told anything. They assume that you're arrogant and condescending if you're telling them something. But if I walk up to you and I say, Toby, may I share something with you? 
who on God's green earth is going to object to that? Right. Nobody. Yep. And then you're wide open to accept anything that I say after that. Not only that, you're kind of curious and you're really tuned in, waiting for me to say something if I say I'm going to share something with you. So it's all in learning those kinds of subtleties that make, us, that make the huge difference between 15 deals a year and 150 deals a year. It's all in asking questions and sharing, not telling. Yeah. Uh, look, when you're, when you're going to share something with me, I mean, you know, it's, I, I feel like I'm going to get a gift, right? You're going to give me a piece of cake and let me share my exactly. candy with you. Um, so- it opens you wide up. It opens you wide open to anything that I want to follow with. Um, uh, real quick, uh, um, to, you know, we know this, you know, boots on the street kind of approach. What is, you know, we live in a connected word world with social media. You know, what, look, here's what you said. You said radio and television. Now I know for a fact that radio and television is our crazy vehicles to get listings. Um, but okay. what are some other things that you see that people should think about in terms of marketing, uh, that are working? I think any and all marketing works to some degree, but the problem with most marketing is is the cost, and that comes back to profitability. You can buy business all day long by buying advertising and doing any type of marketing you want. The question is, if you're having to spend 60 to 75 cents on each dollar that you're bringing in back into the advertising pipeline, then you're never going to be uh, profitable. So uh, nothing against any kind of marketing. I think all of it works. The question is, is how much of it can you do or rely on? If you're totally reliant upon it and you're not willing to do anything without that overhead, I don't see how you can ever be profitable. Mm. Okay, yeah, that's good. Uh, okay, yeah. so here I'm going to ask you the same last two questions I ask everybody. First is this. I'm an aspiring agent. I have 25 bucks. What book should I go buy today? Eat That Frog by Brian Tracy. Yes, I, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I love that book. I love the, 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 the whole message in there. And look, if, if, you, if you in the audience, if you have not read that, you should. You should that should be in your library. You can get a free copy uh, using our link, audibletrial.com slash superagentslive. Okay. And if you've read it three times, read it the fourth time. There you go. You know, you know the, the other book that, that everybody should read every year is uh, uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People. I know it's like a, it's an old book, but you know, that's something that people should read every single year. Absolutely. Um, okay. Um, uh, uh, this this next question, I'm intrigued to, to hear what you say. But do you have any personal habits that you feel have contributed to your success? Well, I have the good fortune of having been reared by a highly disciplinarian father, so I had discipline instilled in me at a very early age. And then another 28 years in the Marine Corps, which further reinforced that. I think coming from a background of discipline and structure has given me somewhat of an advantage that most people would not have uh, because most people don't spend 28 years in the military. Right. Uh, the five major characteristics of a really good professional real estate salesperson, uh, structured, scheduled, scripted, disciplined, and focused, we need to write those five things down, figure out what they mean, and start working on developing and acquiring those and developing them to a higher level. Because if you develop those five characteristics, you will become successful. Without those characteristics, it's going to be a real tough uphill battle to achieve in this extremely competitive industry that we're in. Yeah, structured, scheduled, scripted, and focused. And, you know, as I look at these, Steve. Disciplined um, and focused. Oh, discipline yeah. and focus. Um, yeah. it, it's interesting because, you know, in terms of, of like, w- it does one of these have more uh, emphasis or importance than, than the other? And, and I would look at it and I would say, no, they're all equally important in terms of, you know, your business and your life. I would peel the onion one layer deeper and say they're all interrelated and mm. without all of them, uh, the others will fail. Awesome. Hey, Steve, thanks for coming on the show. I, I know that you're a super, super busy guy. Uh, yeah, my audience is going to love it. I want to say thank you as we wrap up. I'm sure uh, lots of my people want to reach out and say thank you. Maybe they have a follow-up question. Let me know or let them know where they can, where they can find you and, and where they can uh, uh, you know, hit you back. Well, I have, a, I have an informational web page 
so that when I'm dealing with my uh, prospects on a daily basis and they say something like, well, you know, you're a total stranger, we don't know anything about you, you know, I can appreciate that. So I want to invite you to go to my informational web page, which is Stephen, S-T-E-V-E-N, Futch, F-U-T-C-H, dot com. And it shows you my background, my qualifications, and most importantly, my record of sales performance that will convince you that I'm the best agent for the job. Awesome. Hey, Stephen, thanks again, bud. Thank you, sir, for having me. It's been an honor and a privilege, and I hope I've passed along one or two things that everyone can benefit from. Uh, but listen, if I literally have like two pages of notes. I'm sure everybody else does. So, all right, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Let's go. Concentrated